to all my new young friends. I am so happy to be with you today to tell you this story. I hope you have heard the story, Dance of the Elves, about Beecher, an elf whose adventure took place with his good friend, Bird. Today, I will read you the next story. It is called From the Forest to the Sea. This is also illustrated by my friend, Elizabeth Auer. A soft rain was falling. Beecher and his good friend, Rubina, were sitting on a branch in the midst of a tall beech tree. Like an umbrella, the green leaves above kept the elf and bird from becoming wet. They were warm and cozy. Beecher asked his friend, Rubina, do you remember how last year the thirsty leaves of our forest were crying for water? Rubina said, oh yes, I do remember. Beecher then asked, and do you remember what the water nymph told us? Yes, she told us that if the elves danced together, it might rain in our forest. A moment later, Rubina added, and she was right. Beecher smiled at Rubina and said, that was a year ago. Now our forest is happy and all our leaves have plenty of water. Rubina, with a sparkle in her eye, chirped, we should go there and thank her because she saved our forest. A broad smile spread across Beecher's face as he imagined seeing the water nymph again. Yes, was all he needed to say. The rest of that day they prepared. At sunset, they gathered the elves and told them about their plan. The other elves thought this plan to be good and wished them a safe journey. At dawn the next day, the two friends set out to thank the water nymph. Their forest friends waved goodbye as Beecher marched by with Rubina flying from tree to tree next to him. Once out of their forest, they began to share stories. Rubina remembered, when I was learning to fly, I was so scared. Beecher laughed as he said, I do remember. You were standing up on a branch, hoping for enough courage to jump off and fly. And it was you who encouraged me. Now look at me fly. Beecher laughed as Rabina flew some circles around him. At midday, they came to where the path split, one path to the left and one to the right. Beecher thought for a moment. Last year, they had gone to the right. So Beecher pointed to the path to the left and said, I think this way is a shortcut to the pond where the water nymph lives. But Rubina said, I think we should continue on the same path that we traveled last year. Beecher pointed again to the left. I say, let us take my shortcut today and see what new adventure might come our way. Rabina looked down at the ground. She wanted to go on the same path that they used last year. Finally, though, while still looking at the ground, she replied, we can try your new way. After walking for a long time, Beecher stopped. He was tired. He sighed. 
I think we made a mistake going this way. We should be near the pond of the water nymph by now. Beecher hung his head, realizing they had become lost. The trees here are much shorter than the trees where the water nymph lived, and the air smells differently, no longer like a forest. Beecher moaned, oh no, my shortcut was a mistake. Rubina said, I can see a large white bird ahead. I will go and ask the seagull if he has seen a large pond nearby. Rabina looked again at Beecher, who just stared at the ground. She took a deep breath and flew off, landing next to the seagull. Rabina asked the white bird, we are looking for a place that is covered with water nearby. The seagull smiled and pointed with his wing, saying, There, yonder, you will find a shore where water covers nature's floor. Rabina wondered about this, but before she could speak again, the seagull flew off towards where he had pointed. Rabina watched his flight carefully and then joined Beecher, hoping to cheer him up. The two friends followed a path to the top of a hill that the seagull had flown over. From here, they could see just a short distance ahead, more water than they had ever seen before. Beecher stood still. He had never seen anything so huge. This was not a pond. It was an ocean. Beecher thought there was no end to the water, for it spread far into the distance where it met the sky. Beecher jumped up with excitement. Come, let's go. I want to see this water up close. Rubina flew after him. Running down the slope, Beecher came to a jetty where large rocks stretched far out into the ocean. Beecher jumped from rock to rock until he came to where the waves were crashing on to the rocks. With each crash, mists shot high into the air. Hot from hiking, he giggled as his face became wet with the spray. Looking through the mist, Beecher saw to his right a cove with a wide beach. He pointed and said to Rabina, let's go play on that sandy beach. The cool, wet sand under Beecher's feet was something he had never felt before. He looked at his footprint in the sand. Then he took one big step after another. Soon the two friends were running and playing on the beach. While wandering closer to the water, Beecher suddenly stopped. Here he saw beautiful patterns carved in the sand. Come here, Rubina, he called. Come see how the sand here looks like the back of a turtle. Rubina flew towards him, but Beecher did not wait for her. He stepped over a tiny stream to run out upon a sandbar. Here the patterns were carved so deeply that small crabs could crawl in the cracks. Beecher marveled at how such creatures carried their home with them wherever they went. Come, Rubina, come see these crawling creatures, yelled Beecher. As Rubina flew to see the crabs, a passing cloud covered the warm sunlight and the air cooled. Rubina realized in that moment that the ocean water 
was rising. Come, Beecher, our playtime is over, she said. We must return before this sand is covered by deep water. Beecher followed his footsteps across the sandbar. He came to where he had once crossed a tiny stream. Earlier, Beecher had easily hopped over it. But now the stream had widened so much that Beecher could no longer hop over it. So he tried to walk through the water to get across. As his foot touched the bottom, it became stuck. He pulled with all his might to lift his foot, but it was held fast. Beecher called to Rabina, help me, my foot is stuck under the water. Rabina immediately flew to him. After flying around him several times, she said, I cannot see what is holding your foot. Now Beecher became worried. The tide was rising quickly. How could he get free before the water rose over his head? Rabina said, I am your best friend. I will not leave you. Beecher wisely realized that only Rabina could save him now. So he said to Rabina, you must go. Find someone who can help. But Rabina refused to leave him. No, I am not going to leave you when you are in trouble. Beecher pleaded again, please search for someone, my dear friend. But Rabina just shook her head. No. Finally, on the third time, Beecher spoke sternly. Rabina, you must find someone who can save me. Go now. With this command, Beecher flew up into the air right above Beecher. Rabina did not know where to fly. She flittered about above Beecher for a while. Finally, with tears in her eyes, she flew back to her friend and said, No person will know what I am saying. How can I, a bird, get a person to come here? Beecher realized Rabina was right. But what could Rabina do? Then he remembered encouraging Rubina when she was learning to fly. Beecher looked up to her and said, Come close so I can touch your beak. Rubina flapped her wings right in front of Beecher's face. He reached out with his finger and gently touched her beak and said, Ida. In that very moment, Rabina felt all doubt leave her. She now felt that she would be able to talk with any person she found. It must be magic, she thought to herself, as she flew back up into the air above the Beecher. From this height, Rabina could see a fisherman tending his nets on a dock beyond the beach. Rabina flew as fast as she could to the dock, landing on a post right in front of the fisherman. The surprised fisherman stopped his work and looked directly at Rabina. The two just stared at each other for a long moment. Slowly, the fisherman turned to his dog and said, Goldie! Did you just hear that bird speak? Goldie barked and wagged her tail. Well, no one will believe me. They will say, silly, Sonny, you must be getting old, for now you think you can talk to birds. Sonny stared again at Rubina. After a while, Goldie yipped. 
Sonny turned to look at Goldie and said, oh, I think this bird wants us to do something for it. But Goldie interrupted him with an enthusiastic bark. Woof! Well, too bad, Sonny continued. We've got way too much work to do to be following some bird around. Goldie whined. What? said Sonny. You don't agree with me? One more time, Sonny turned to look at Rubina. Moments later, he said loudly, I think this bird just asked me to follow her up that beach because she has a friend who is in danger. Goldie barked and stood up wagging her tail. All right, then, said the fisherman. It is two against one. We will go with this bird to see if we can help. With Goldie by his side, Sonny walked to the end of the dock and onto the beach. Rabina flew in front of them, wishing the fisherman could walk as fast as she could fly. In a few minutes, they arrived to where Rabina had left Beecher. Sonny stood on the beach and stared out over the water. I don't see anything, he hollered. Rabina flew frantically about while the fisherman with his dog stood on the beach, scanning the surface of the water. Finally, Sonny called to Rabina. I'm sorry, it appears you have lost your friend. There is nothing we can do now. But just then, Goldie raced into the sea and began to bark at the water in front of her. Sonny took off his boots and took 12 big steps into the water to stand next to Goldie. But from here, he still could not see anyone else. Goldie kept barking at a certain place in the water. So Sonny plunged his hands through the water at that place. In the sandy mud below, his fingers wrapped around something. He then lifted his hands out of the water. Sonny held in his hands a very large clam. He could see only a clam, but the others could see that along with the clam, he had also lifted up Beecher, whose foot was still being held by the clam. Just then, the clam opened for a moment, releasing Beecher's foot. With his foot now free, Beecher jumped from Sonny's hands to land on Goldie's back. Sonny tossed the clam back into the water. He turned towards the beach and said, well, this seems to have been a waste of time. Just then, Sonny's shirt was sprayed with water. He looked to see Goldie's tail wagging with joy. With each wag, her tail slid through the water and tossing it first in one direction and then the other. Sonny got, Sonny got sprayed again before he realized that Goldie was very happy about something and was no longer barking. What makes you so happy, Sonny muttered as he strolled back to the beach, unaware that Goldie was carrying Beecher on her back. When they reached the dry beach, Beecher jumped off Goldie's back. Thank you, Beecher said to Goldie as he stroked her strong leg. Come on, Goldie, Sonny commanded as they began to walk back to the dock. We still have work to do. Goldie barked goodbye to Rubina and Beecher, who watched Sonny and Goldie walk back to the dock. Beecher noticed that the sun was close to the horizon and said to Rabina, it will be dark in a couple hours. We should get going. 
Then he turned to Rubina to say, I am lucky to have you as my brave best friend. The two friends traveled back to the top of the hill to rest for the night. After the sun had set, Beecher lay down on his back to look up at the stars. Rabina remarked, touching my beak was good magic. How do you think the fisherman was able to understand you, asked Beecher. Puzzled, Beecher asked, didn't you work magic when you touched me? No, Beecher said, I pretended because I hoped it would give you enough courage. The two thought about this silently for a long while. Then Beecher chuckled. Perhaps we'll never know how the fisherman was able to understand you, Rubina. Again, the two were quiet for a while. Suddenly, Beecher said, perhaps there was some magic because when I touched your beak, I felt something of me go into you. Perhaps it was my courage, because after you flew off, I became very afraid, while you became so brave. Rabina asked, How were you while I was off fetching the fisherman? Beecher answered, First the water reached my waist. When I heard a man's voice and a dog's bark, the water was nearly up to my neck. I was very afraid that you would not arrive in time. Then Beecher smiled and said, I felt so happy when I heard the voices coming close. I knew you had found the courage to get help. But then my hope faded away when I heard the fisherman say he could not see me in the water. And when he said, there is nothing I can do now, then I was filled with fear. But lucky for us, Goldie knew where I was. Now Beecher laughed as he said, I don't think that fisherman was able to see me, an elf but he certainly could understand you, a bird. Beecher then lay on the ground, looking up at the sky. The stars glittered as if they were listening. After a while, Beecher sat up and said, it was Goldie who saved my life. Rabina added, and it was the fisherman too. He lifted you out of the water when he lifted up that clam. And for that, I am thankful, said Beecher, now lying on his back again and gazing up once more at the shining stars. The two friends watched the summer stars for a long while. Eventually the moon began to rise. Does the moon look like a shining bowl to you, asked Beecher? I wonder. What does it hold inside? I think that while we sleep, the moon gathers up all our memories of each day. I think our memories make her happy. Each night, she becomes happier, adding more memories while, until she is full. Then she gives them all, all these happy memories to her friend the sun and starts all over again. Beecher liked that and smiled. My friend, I am now very sleepy, said Rubina, and tomorrow we hope to find the water nymph. You are right, said Beecher. We should go to sleep. Good night, Rubina. When the sun rose the next morning, Rabina flew up above the trees to look around. She could see the ocean 
and the beach where they were yesterday, Rabina turned to look inland. She saw a large pond nearby. Rabina got excited when she saw it was covered with water lilies. That's the pond where the water nymph lives. They had been so close to where they wanted to go after all. Chirping loudly, she flew down to Beecher to tell him the good news. Minutes later, they were singing as they traveled along the new path. Before noon, they came to the pond, and there was the water nymph. Her beauty filled the air above the pond as she smiled at the two travelers. Beecher and Rabina joined the water nymph on her lily pad, where they spent the rest of the day talking. Beecher said to the water nymph, I bring you thanks from all the elves of my forest. This pleased the water nymph. Then Beecher and Rabina told her about their latest adventure, about how Beecher's foot had become stuck in a clam when the tide was rising, and how brave Rubina had found a fisherman with his dog, and how they had saved Beecher. The water nymph listened to their many tales with great interest. Finally, when evening came, the water nymph showed them where they could sleep next to each other on a lily pad. Once again, the moon watched over them while they slept. The next morning, Beecher and Rabina bid the water nymph farewell and began their journey back to their forest home. When they arrived back to their forest, all the elves gathered to hear about their new adventure. They were amazed when Beecher told them about how huge the ocean was. He told them about the thousands of crabs crawling on the sand. Wonder filled them when Beecher told them how each crab carried their home on their back wherever they went. It is so different here, Beecher remarked. Our forest is our home. The leaves at the tippy top make our roof for our home. Rabina then said, the ocean's waters began to return while we played. Beecher's foot became caught in a clamshell. He was in danger. Beecher told how Rabina had found courage to save him. After that story, they told of their visit to the water nymph. The sun was setting when their story came to an end. As darkness descended upon the forest, all the elves joined together to dance and sing. The forest air became filled with laughter and life. Deep in a forest with tall, tall trees, under a mushroom, you just might see. Beecher asleep with his good friend Bird. Peek at him gently and don't say a word. Picture our hero, with two quests done, dreaming of more adventures to come. And with that, our story comes to an end. And I hope you have enjoyed it. This is Andrew Linnell. Goodbye, my dear friends, and hope to see you again. <laughs>